This video is about the flexible furlough scheme. It's part of a series of videos about tax and accounting issues. So if you, if you would like more content like this, then please consider subscribing. And it really helps me if you press the like button. The flexible furlough scheme. It's probably just worth recapping on the scheme as it is before we go on to the changes that are being made. So if you remember, the basics of the furlough scheme uh, you can receive money back from the government if you pay your staff while they're not working. If they, you can pay, you receive up to 80%, up to £2,500 of their salary. Um, you get their national insurance and pensions back. Um, you can claim during, if they've got holiday period during that time. Um, and the period, it lasts from March till June, the main scheme. And then the changes start. So the, there is tapering and changes from, from July onwards. So in July, they introduced flexible furlough. In August, there is some tapering in that we have to pay our employees national insurance and their pensions. And then in September, we have to pay 10% of their salary, claim back 70% of their normal salary, we have to pay them at least 80%. And in October, that 70% goes down to 60%. So those are the, the main changes. So how does the flexibility um, of the furlough kick in? Well, first of all, it starts in July, as I've said. It's, there's a ratchet down. So this is a, a just a, is it technical? But it's quite important anyway. Um, so the ratchet down means that once you've claimed, if you claim six people or seven people in June, you can only claim not more than those people in the subsequent month. So, so once, you're, once we're into July, August, September, October, then each time we reduce the number of people on furlough, we can't go back and increase them again. I think that's quite an important point and it's something we could easily get ca caught out on, particularly if we sort of hope that uh, all things have returned to normal, uh, re-employ uh, and bring out a furlough all, all our staff, and then we think, whoa, no, we can't use them all. Um, uh, so we just got to be careful to make sure that we, um, that we don't fall into that trap with that. You've got to, although there is flexibility, so you can choose as and when you want um, your staff to be furloughed, you do have to be aware that, um, that you do have to claim for seven days. But to be honest, if you're claiming for less than seven days, there's probably not very much money involved anyway. So it's probably not such a material thing to your finances but you can claim for seven days furlough in, in July, or September, October um, um, in each month. Um, and you have flexibility about uh, when those days are. You could also claim more than seven days. You can uh, claim the full, full month. You claim it monthly because the calculations change every month. You have to claim it every month. Otherwise the computer would explode, I think. So you, you, each month we have to do a claim, which is different to at the moment where we do it in three weeks or we do it over months and overlapping months. Well, that, that, that all comes to an end once we get into July. What we have with our employees is we have a pool of furloughed employees. So anybody who has had a three week furlough in March, April, May or June can then go into the flexible furlough scheme. If they haven't been furloughed previously, they can't be flexibly furloughed. There is also one other slight complication with that in that it's probably fairly rare, but if, you're if you've got somebody on furlough, you bring, you, if you've had them working, then you bring them back and you just furlough them at the end of June, that person has to do a three week stretch of furlough. So if you furlough them the last two weeks of June, they also have to be furloughed for a week in July. So they have to fit in those, those three weeks. Parental leave, parental leave is, uh, is, they're very flexible about that. So if somebody comes off, back off for parental leave, um, then you can furlough them. You can, book end, you can book end holidays. So you can put somebody on furlough before the holiday and after the holiday, then that whole period counts as a furlough period. So in effect, you can get the government to pay for some of your holiday pay, which seems a bit too good to be true, but I really do believe that that is the case. Um, and I'll read you uh, something that's on the revenue website, which I think sort of proves that it is, they're, they're sort of okay, but don't really want you doing it. What they've said 
is during this unprecedented time, we are keeping the policy on holiday pay during furlough under review. So that to me says that they've noticed that there is this anomaly in the system and they're just going to monitor um, how many people and sort of whether it's abused or not. And it's like the teachers in the playground say, we know what you're up to. And if you keep doing it, we'll put you all in detention. But in the meantime, it sounds like we can get the government to pay for our staff's holiday. So uh, it's, uh, whether you consider that to be moral or not is not for me to judge. But for you know, if you if you want to uh, take advantage of it, that is uh, it's, that's up to you. There's just a couple of other things I just want to um, just to touch on, which has nothing to do with furlough. Um, with VAT, don't forget that your VAT uh, quarter ending May, that VAT will need paying. We we didn't pay the previous quarter. We didn't have to pay the previous quarter. You do now to need to start paying your VAT, so you need to be aware of that. Um, if you can't pay it, then you need a, a formal sort of time to pay arrangements with the revenue. The July personal tax payments doesn't need to be made, but I just would plead with you that uh, if you don't pay the July one, it'll double your January one. So just be aware of that because um, it'll be no easier to pay in, in, in January. Um, and just to, to complete that circle, you can't pay your uh, tax payments. You might want to consider a bounce back loan. I've done a separate video on that um, uh, and to, to make sure that you've got the funds because bounce back loans need to be paid back in monthly installments over, uh, over six years. So, uh, so that might give you the flexibility that you need.